So one of the most common questions that uh, I get uh, on uh, our YouTube uh, videos all the time is where do you get your protein? And also in real life people ask, where do you get your protein? So, you know, when you turn vegetarian, people ask you, where do you get your protein? Then you turn vegan and then all the vegetarians ask you, where do you get your protein? Then you go raw vegan and all the vegans ask you, where do you get your protein? And then you go fruitarian and all the raw vegans ask you, where do you get your protein? So it seems to be this obsession about protein in the world of nutrition. And it's, it's no wonder because, you know, even in the word protein, it actually means of primary importance. So even going back in the history of since we discovered protein from the beginning, it's been revered as a sort of magical nutrient because it's the building block of life. But of course, in reality, we just need enough protein. That's what we need. We don't need, it's not like, oh, this magical nutrient. No, as long as you're getting enough protein, that's good. And there's other nutrients that are equally as important. But first of all, just to answer the question quickly, do, where do I get my protein? Well, it's coming from fruit. So contrary to most people's belief some, for some reason, people don't think there's protein in fruit, but actually every whole plant food on the planet contains every essential amino acid. You know, proteins are built up of amino acids and every single amino acid, essential amino acid, is in fruit. So there is in fact protein in fruit and if you look at the average, fruit usually averages around 5% of calories from protein. The next point then would be, is that enough? Is that enough protein? 5% of calories. And of course there's many ways to look at it, but I mean I would be dead if that wasn't enough. I've been eating like this for five years. If it wasn't enough protein, I'm pretty sure I would be pretty sick, but I'm not pretty sick. I'm very healthy, I'm feeling great. Uh, Doug Graham, been doing this for 20 years or more, he would be dead if he's not getting enough protein, but he is getting enough protein. So are a whole host of other fruit eating maniacs out there, also definitely getting enough protein. Chimpanzees, they would be dead too if they didn't get enough protein but they do get enough protein, mostly from fruit. Yes, they do eat some meat, but it's very, very little. It's only part of the year, and it's definitely not enough to be significant in terms of protein intake. And of course, you know, bodybuilders and people that are totally into their protein, they seem to sort of just think that everyone wants to be huge bodybuilders, and they look at me and they see me going to the gym or something, and they'll be like, he goes to the gym, but he looks like that. He doesn't have huge muscles like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, he must not be able to get enough protein. But of course, the level of musculature that I'm having at this moment is not a reflection of my protein intake. It's a reflection of my training regime over the last 15 years, which has been close to none. I've started training again in the last few years and I've been gaining muscle at pretty much the highest rate possible they usually say around a pound of lean muscle mass gain per month is a good number and that's essentially what I've been getting for the months that I have been training but it's on and off and I'm not focusing a lot on strength training I'm focusing more on running so my body is simply a reflection of my lifestyle not my protein intake I couldn't just suddenly increase my protein intake and just sit around and bam I would have big muscles that's not how it works each animal has a diet specific to that species uh, so they will build, they will get their protein from whatever source they're getting it from and then they will build their bodies from it. That's just how it works. And, and the optimal human diet, in my opinion, is a diet of fruit and possibly to a lesser degree tender vegetables as well. And tender vegetables do, you know, they average about 15% of calories from protein. Fruit, as I said, averages about 5%. So that is adequate for humans. Also, you gotta realize that the highest source of protein is not necessarily the best source of protein. We don't, we don't need just as much as possible. We just need enough. And speaking of enough, has there ever been a medical case of protein deficiency? No, it has not. In the history of, in the medical history, not a single case of protein deficiency, except for Kwashiorkor and mar Marasmus, which are two uh, caloric deficiency diseases. So when you're not getting enough calories, you're also not getting enough protein. Or if you were getting all your calories from a refined source like sugar or, or oil, obviously you wouldn't get enough protein. But if you're eating whole plant foods like fruits, you're definitely gonna get enough uh, protein as long as you're eating enough calories. And remember also that more training 
if you're trying to build muscle, for example, more training will require more calories, which will mean you'll eat more, and as a result, you'll also take in more protein. So overall, you will eat more protein if you're training, but you don't have to change the ratio of protein to carbohydrates to fats, which in fruit is usually around 90% carbohydrates, 5% fat, 5% protein, which is adequate for building muscle. There are plenty of vegan bodybuilders, obviously, and there's even some fruitarian bodybuilders out there as well. Another interesting fact is that when you cook protein, when you heat proteins, they become denatured. This means that the structure of the protein changes. And since we are using enzymes in our body, in our, in our stomach, to sort of unlock the protein structure in order to digest it, by making enzyme resistant bonds when we heat our proteins, we're not able to digest them as well as if they were raw. As a result, chances are that raw proteins are more assimilatable, more digestible than cooked proteins. So people on a cooked diet will likely need to eat more protein, theoretically, than someone on a raw diet. But that's just kind of speculation, but it makes sense to me anyway. Another example would be looking at the Papua New Guinea Highlanders, which eat a diet very low in protein. I've heard as low as 2% but definitely less than 5%, which, uh, which is what you'll get from fruit, uh, less than 5% of calories from protein, and they look pretty you know, fit and strong to me, and they don't have any issues or anything related to a supposed protein deficiency kind of situation. So obviously they're getting enough protein, even though they're eating very little protein. In fact, most of the science is pointing to the fact that most people are getting too much protein. The breakdown products of protein is acid, so it causes things like a burden on your kidneys to excrete all that acid waste, uh, it messes with your pH balance in your body, and of course it causes osteoporosis because all that acid needs to be buffered and you take and your body uses the calcium from your bones to buffer the acid in the protein, excess protein, and as a result you get osteoporosis, brittle bones. So as, as protein intake goes up, osteoporosis also goes up. That's a, a, a well-known fact. Uh, when you're looking at statistics from around the world of osteoporosis. The more protein intake, the more osteoporosis. Yet they say, drink your milk to, to get your calcium, but milk is so high in protein that it's actually one of the worst sources of calcium you can get because you end up in a negative calcium balance, as they say. What about breast milk? Breast milk is 4 to 6% of calories from protein. And we're talking about a little baby here that's going to double in size in a year. There's never a time in a human's life where you're growing more than when you're a baby. You are doubling in size in a year. No bodybuilder on earth could ever double in size in a year, no matter how many steroids they took. So if 5% average of pro uh, calories from protein, if 5% protein is adequate for a baby, it's definitely going to be adequate for an adult, of course. And remember, these are percentages of total calories. So the baby needs obviously less total protein than an adult, but as a percentage of the total calories, it remains the same as you grow older. So 5% should definitely be adequate for an adult human. And just to conclude, you know, in the end, we can, we can look at scientific studies and we can look at uh, what is protein and how does it digest. And we can look at studies of this population and this population and protein intakes. And we can make up our mind. And I, I think the science is generally pointing in the direction that, um, you know, 5 to 10% of calories from protein is certainly adequate. Uh, and that p most people are getting too much protein. But even if we just take a step back and l observe nature and, uh, and, and think logically, um, it doesn't make sense that we need to eat something that is not appealing to us in its natural state in order to get the nutrients we need. So if we truly had to eat beans to get our protein, does that make sense that we've evolved over millions of years to require something that is inedible to us in its natural state, beans, until we cook it, but in their natural state it's inedible to us, but we need to eat it to get enough protein? What did we do before we started cooking? And what about meat? Does it make sense that we have to eat something that is disgusting to us in its natural state in order to get enough protein? What did we do before we started cooking? Did we, did we just love eating you know, dead meat? Do you relish at the thought of just ripping into a dead carcass? Or what about a mango? You know, Fruit appeals to our senses. It appeals to our sense of smell, our sight, and of course our taste. 
and it's the only thing that we can truly eat a full meal of by itself without condiments and spices and without mixing just by itself in completion and be satisfied with it it's the only thing in nature that can fulfill all those points every other food has to be somehow processed or or we have to somehow sort of get ourselves to eat it like with greens or with or with meat having to sort of overcome the disgustingness factor of it so i don't think we ever need to do anything in order to get our nutrients and sort of go beyond what feels natural the only thing that's naturally appealing to humans is fruit and fruit is adequate in terms of protein both scientifically and experientially in, in my experience anyway so that was a long video but it needed to be said where do I get my protein? I get it from fruit there's protein in fruit yes there is and I don't know why you think we need more protein why? everything else points in the direction of less protein thanks for watching if you're interested in trying the raw vegan diet and learning about how to get started with it you can go to our website where we have a free e-booklet on how to get started we'll teach you everything about basically the basics of doing this type of diet and uh, in the end of course you don't have to learn anything from a book truly you can just listen to your body but sometimes it would be good to just have a general guideline on how to you know start off so go check that out and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.